Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we look at Blue Note 17. Just how good is this mysterious whiskey? Let's find out. All right, and then folks, welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we're gonna deep dive into Blue Note Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 17 year. So before we do, if you haven't already, go over to the Whiskey Cove website, where you can pick up some excellent glassware, the whiskeycove.square.site, for some very competitive prices. And we are also doing a 5,000 free subscriber giveaway. So all you need to do is be a subscriber and continue to check in and look for the videos and for updates about extra bottles being added to that list. And then also when we are going to do that 5,000 subscriber live giveaway. So far we have Willet Green Top. We also have the Old Forest Barrel Strength Single mm -hmm barrel and then well 107 so so far three bottles and we'll also be adding three more one for every 500 bottles that we get and one for every 500 subscribers that we get ever closer to that 5000 mark however we're not here to talk about that giveaway we are here to talk about blue note 17 bourbon so even though this is a bourbon uh, it is distilled in Tennessee. So it is distilled what we assume uh, when we say we, we, the whiskey lovers and bourbon lovers around the world, that this is made by Dickel. So a lot of people like the premise that Tennessee whiskey isn't bourbon. Uh, however, they are calling themselves a bourbon, so we'll see if it has all those bourbon qualities. I've tried some of these other additions, Blue Note 9 year and 10 year, which you just don't see anymore, and they were on shelves everywhere. It's phenomenal, phenomenal juice. I've also tried the 17 year before, but I want to talk a little bit about that. You can sometimes pick these up every now and again if you're, uh, if you're at a store. Sometimes they can still get dropped there, whether that they just distribution has just held them up for whatever reason and they just drop them every now and again or just some barrels come out of blue note yes they don't distill they might distill their own stuff but for a lot of the time they do source their own stuff and they also do a fantastic job at sourcing this stuff like i said that nine year and ten year was phenomenal and the uncut and unfiltered that they do which is like 50 bucks and if you can get one above 60 percent abv it's an absolute hitter however let's get into this bottle let's pour the whiskey in the glass and let's talk a little bit about what's going on it's got a little tab that kind of pulls off it also does have one of these uh small cellophane wraps that uh, are pretty easy to get off for the most part, especially when they have a tab. And it also has like a really nice blue and gold seal on the top. All in all, the bottle kind of reminds me of uh, like an Eagle Rare bottle. It has this beautiful front label, blue, gold, white font. It's just phenomenal. It is also unfiltered, barrel proof, coming in at 47.75% as barrel proof. Another reason why we think it's Dickel, because Dickel tend to have really low barrel proof products for the most part. You can also get these like up to 55%, but this is the one that I have here today. How is the Coke pop? Oh, that's pretty good. It hits a high note. Let's go in again. Not as high as the first one, but still. Uh, it does have a synthetic cork, so not great. I, I prefer a regular OG cork, but these tend to hold up really well over time. It does also have a little bit of like bourbon uh, charring. I wouldn't say bourbon charring, but aged bourbon over here of maybe when it was sealed. <coughs> maybe it wasn't as tight of a seal as it might have wanted to be, or maybe they just had some bourbon on the cork when they sealed it. However, let's pour this thing in the glass here. So it also does have this little pamphlet on the side neck here that comes with it. And it says on the front, smoother than smooth. So it says blue notes were born in the 1920s on the streets of Memphis in Tennessee. And they have since found their way into almost every other form of music. You feel a blue note almost as much as you hear one. They are the most twangy notes that give a blue song its edge, providing the best uh, providing the beat with personality, spirit, and soul. Blue Note Bourbon is artiful, artifully crafted to honor the Memphis blues and its influence on music throughout the creation of rock and roll, like the blues. This bourbon is bold yet smoother than smooth. What is the definition of smooth? I guess that's open to interpretation, but what I take away from what smooth is, very easy to drink, and then maybe not too interesting actually it's just something you can drink and you don't really have to think about it i don't want that to be this whiskey i think this whiskey should be better than smooth however we'll see let's take a little look at the whiskey in the glass here although it does have some darker notes there's definitely an orange hue in there some copper notes are definitely coming through maybe like um uh, kind of like a honey note right so it's definitely like a 
like a craft honey note maybe there but definitely a lot of copper no particulates in the glass it is unfiltered but doesn't look like there's anything there or anything in the bottle there which is also pretty cool to see so then let's go in for a nose on blue note 17 year bourbon I, do, I don't know if I primed myself uh, by looking at this and thinking that it kind of has a honey color to it. So I'm definitely getting honey on the nose. Definitely a little bit of cherry there as well, like a, like a bright red baking sugary cherry. A little bit of spice there actually, a little bit of spice that kind of hits the front of my nose. Like a peppercorn type spice, or maybe like a Mustardy horseradish spice, if you're familiar with that note. Not as much wood as I was actually expecting on a 17 year bourbon. I was expecting the hit with more of like an oak punch, which I don't mind. I do get a decent amount of oak from an Elijah Craig 18, and I was kind of expecting that from this, but it hasn't delivered thus far on the nose. It's a little bit there, but it's just not a star of the show. It's kind of in the background there. Maybe that's what smoother than smooth means. You just can't taste any oak, but there's no oak spice with it. It does it, it tastes a little sweet, but not as sweet as I would like it to be. But when you get up there with age, that sweet kind of falls off a little bit, or that sweetness tends to fall off with age. However, this is cast strength as well at 47%. So I would be expecting some barrel char. I'm not really getting that on the nose here. Yeah, maybe a little bit of uh, marzipan or like Italian sweet cherry liqueur type note there too. Enough talking, let's go in for a taste here. A lot more sweetness straight off the bat there. I was wondering if there was much sweetness that was gonna come through on the palate, but I'm definitely getting a lot more there. I wouldn't say it's butterscotchy, scotchy. it is more syrupy and more, uh, more thicker in sweetness, so it's definitely more maple forward notes. You are picking up some of that wood now more on the palate. So the oaky wood there, the kind of uh, the syrupy sweetness kind of translates more into like a maple syrup sweetness. That's kind of where I got that from there as well. The cherry kind of Italian cream, uh, Italian di Serrano amaretto note is also there as well. Makes for a really nice transition into the finish where you do pick up some more of those oaky notes. Mouthfeel, let's talk about mouthfeel on this one for a second. The mouthfeel is fantastic, very oily and very rich there as well. Does an excellent job at coating just about every taste bud in your mouth. I'm not getting that super oaky twang on my palate that I can get from aged oak uh, products like a well at 12. Uh, it's very well balanced and very consistent of the flavors. Around. There's no one flavor that's outshining the others. You get a little bit of the heat that's coming through. You get a little bit of like that really nice balanced wood there, the oak notes in the background. And then you're also getting the sweetness. I would say if anything, actually, maybe the sweetness as I'm thinking about it and as I'm tasting through it here on my palate, maybe that sweetness is just a hair's head, a, a, a hair above those other notes. Let's go in for another taste here. It is definitely an easy drink in whiskey. There's really not much heat there at all. And again, it is a 45% or 47% ABV whiskey. So close to stuff like Buffalo Trace and Elijah Craig. Obviously this has a lot more years on them. But how, what, how, uh, how much ABV is on the Elijah Craig 18? So the Elijah Craig 18 is 45% ABV. I do feel like that is a little bit more complex than this whiskey. There's also a note in here that I don't particularly like and I can't quite pick it out. So I'm just gonna go in for another taste. Then it's like a like a, a dusty caramel corn type note there as well. Say like you get to the end of your cereal and then you look at the packet and there's all this like dust in there. And there's two types of people in this world. People who throw away that dust and people who love that dust and dump it into a bowl and add some milk with it. But it's kind of like that wheaty, corny, dusty note. It's not, it's not necessarily a game spoiler or a game changer for me on this whiskey, but it's definitely there. I don't particularly like it. And I don't know if that's because this is just dickle distillate. Actually, hold on a second here. So I have a Dickel 15-year uh, single barrel whiskey here. And let me see if I can pick up that note that didn't pop at all. 
There you go. And let's see if we can pick up that note here as well. I do feel like this Dickel 15, from when I've tried it, has a lot of cherry notes on it. Yeah, this has got a lot more, uh, uh, like, really bright, sharp cherry note on the nose. Well, this is, now I'm going back and forward. This does have a little bit of tobacco on the nose and some dusty oak there as well. Maybe I just needed to stand up to something that uh, was a little bit different on the palate for me to appreciate some of the other smaller flavors here. Uh, on the nose, I should say. But let's go in for a taste to see if I can pick up that same note here. Yes, that is the same note. I can guarantee you folks at this point that this is Dickel Distillate in here. It's not a vitamin medicine-y note that a lot of metallic notes that a lot of people don't like and associate with Dickel. It's not that. It's kind of like a wheaty, dusty cereal note. I, I, and I don't know why, it just doesn't quite belong there in terms of you get these excellent flavors that are really married really well together. And then it's like an ugly sister on the outside looking in that doesn't quite fit in with it. Uh, so it does, it kind of, I wouldn't say it kicks the whiskey out of balance, but it definitely makes you think like, I don't really appreciate that note because it's kind of spoiling what is an excellent whiskey a little bit there as well. But if you're someone who doesn't drink too much whiskey and I don't want to say that your palates aren't there, aren't refined as much as mine. I don't particularly think that I have a fantastic palate, so to speak, but you might be able to pass over that note. And again, it's not really a game changer or game spoiler for me, but it's definitely there. And it's definitely one that I have to talk and think about. Uh, however, let's get this out of the way here. So with that being said, we need to talk a little bit about this whiskey. So what we like to do on this channel, if you don't already know, we like to score the whiskey zero out of 100. 100 being like close to George T. Stag level, which we gave a 98, and then zero being just the worst whiskey you can ever think of. And then we also like to do a value for money, A through F, A being the best, F being the worst. So let's do the value for money first. I think I paid about $170 for this, which is a lot of money. Uh, and I paid about 50 or 60 bucks for that other dickle. Value for money, I'm gonna give this a D. I'm gonna give this a D for value for money. I don't think that uh, the difference between this ball and that other dickle 15 is $120 or $100 more. I just don't, I don't think that value is there. I wouldn't buy this again at that price. I have tried the 55% ABV ones of these and that tasted so much better than this. So if you do want to uh, buy one of these, definitely look for one that's close to 55% because I think maybe it's the proof that's lacking and maybe the proof is something that kind of dissolves that dusty note that I, I, don't, I don't particularly like. So score out of 100 and let's give it this, this ball the best opportunities we can. So score out of 100, I'm gonna give this an 81. Yes, like I said, this could have been a lot higher if it wasn't for that note that I didn't like. That probably brought it down by about five points. However, it's still an excellent whiskey, very well balanced. You get some of those great balancing notes between the sweetness, the oak presence, some of that gentle spice rolled in there as well, and also some of that barrel char there as well. But when I drink this, and I drink that Dickel 15, there's not a whole lot of difference between them. I would only say that 15 Dickel has a lot more of a sharper note on the nose. Uh, but we're not doing a review on that, we're doing a review on this. So with that being said, should you buy it? Not the lower proof ones. I would say pass on the lower proof ones. Definitely look for like the 52, 53 and above. That's where this whiskey shines. I wish I had one of those balls I could do a review on that, but this is what we have here today. And it is an 81 out of 100, which still is an excellent, excellent score. That's a phenomenal score. It's not a whiskey ball I'm gonna buy again, unless I can find one of those higher proof ones. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video and enjoyed today's review on this. If you have any questions, let us know down below. And if you've been able to try some of the higher proof ones of these and what you thought of them, please share with us your thoughts. And as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time, cheers.